Okay, so here we last left off um, is that we completed our adjusted trial balance, right? Unadjusted trial balance, right? The one thing I told you guys to that I, I really wanted you guys to make sure that you understood was that I wanted you guys to simplify everything and place them into their main account. So as you can see here, right, every main account is associated with all of its sub accounts that make up the main account. Because when we actually do our financial statements, we want to make our financial statements look a little cleaner. We don't want all of these accounts because look, that's too many accounts and my financial statements are just going to go, they're going to be too big and too long. What I want to do is I want to con consolidate or make them a little condensed by, um, by shrinking them up and only using main accounts. So as you guys remember, I um, placed all my main accounts as blue and then all my little uh, sub accounts are uh, they're um, black, okay? So here I made this little worksheet so that it makes it a little easier for me to associate what the main accounts are and which ones are the sub accounts. Now this is the unadjusted trial balance. So here where we left off, we remember that at the end of at the end of the month, right, for this is for June 30th, we match both debits and credits on both sides, on both main and sub accounts, okay? But I left my sub accounts for a reason because at the end of the day, what's going to happen is that I'm still going to utilize this exact worksheet because when I do my adjustments, I have to squeeze in my adjustments here as well. So right here... We're doing good. Our debits and our credits match, so we can move on to the next section, which is actually going to be um, completing the adjustments. So as I scroll down in my scenario, we are finally going to be here, right? Because we already completed our remaining amount. We debit, we, I mean, yeah, we debited our cash, right? It's in our bank right now. So now... Here says that we are going to do is begin our closing process. So let's do our adjustment entries. So here you'll need your journal and your ledger and everything that you need, right? Because we will be looking at all uh, uh, six worksheets, right? We have our general journal, right? Once we post, once we uh, finish our journalizing, we're going to post it to the ledger, right? then we will be also introducing you to the depreciation worksheet because we will be needing to depreciate our assets as well, okay? So let's go ahead and get started with the very, very first scenario. Here it says that we need to convert our periodic inventory. So what was the first, what, what, what inventory do we have that's periodic? Our coffee mugs. And what are we given? What are we converting? What are we converting? Right, right. But what, what, what are we converting? What, what, what? We're, we're converting our coffee mugs into inventory, right? Okay. So here we're give, we're given that a hundred and six coffee mugs were on hand. That's how much we had left. Okay. So we have 106, so let's go ahead and go to our um, inventory worksheet and solve for it. So, uh, that's not it, hold on. So 
So I have this inventory worksheet is going to be this one. Okay, so there we are. Uh, right, our regular and our supreme coffee are already completed. Now we have to complete our uh, periodic inventory. So let's take a look at here. We reach the end of the month, right? So what's, and we know that we need to, um, sorry, excuse me. At, we know at the end of the day, right? We have a total of 106 items left. So quantity is going to be 106. Okay. So if we have a quantity of 106, okay, let's do a little review here. How do I convert my, uh, how do I complete this form? What am I supposed to do? Anybody? So we should we need to have total balance? Yes, we need to get our total balance or our total purchases. So what is my total amount of cups that I actually purchase? We purchased 440 cups, okay? At what's my total purchase price? There you go. What was my total freight? Five hundred. Oh, maybe that's where it is. This is not split. Uh, how do I undo a merge this one? There you go. There you go. There you go. Okay, so, uh, so you said five hundred. Yeah. Okay. Good. Ah, save again. It did it again. Okay, let me undo it. Um, okay, so equal sum. Five hundred, and then what's my total total? Cost. Good. Fifteen ninety two twenty. Now, what method am I using for this one to calculate the cost? Weighted average. Weighted average. Okay. So good. So we total up a cost here. Do we have any returns and allowances? Yes, we did. So I'm just going to do it here. How many total in quantity did I return? Nine. You did a total of nine. Okay. Um, and what grand total was my total cost that I returned? I, do you say, what do you say? 1294? No, 
Okay, so 22 of 24. So this is a total. I'm going to highlight this and, you know, so you guys know that this is a total. Okay. So let's go ahead and solve our equation here. So what was my total purchases of quantity? What was my original quantity that I purchased? 440. 440. All right. And what was my total purchase price at that point? Yes. Okay. Now we have a returns and allowances, right? We returned nine items at a total cost of twenty two twenty four. Okay. So therefore, my subtotal should be my four forty minus my nine items. So I should have a total of four thirty one. Right. Same thing's gonna happen here, right? I'm gonna take. My 1292.20, and I'm going to subtract out my 2224, right? Because I don't have that stuff anymore. I returned it. So I need to take it out of my purchases. So this is what I have available. Or so far, that's what I have for my subtotal, right? After returns um, and allowances. So with that being said, freight is zero. It doesn't increase anything, but it does increase the total cost. How much was the freight? 500. 500. So, therefore, what is my total net purchases? Anybody? What's my total net purchases? Fifteen sixty nine ninety six. Good. Fifteen sixty nine ninety six. Okay. So once again. We're assuming, well, we are starting our business from the ground up, so we don't have beginning inventory, right? We already solved for our net purchases by calculating all of that. So therefore, that is my net purchases. That's also my goods available, okay? Now that I have this information, which is very, very important, right? If I started out with 431 cups and I have 106 left, how many did I sell? Three twenty-five. Good. Okay. So because we're doing weighted average, right? I have a quantity, and I also have a new total cost. Because from up here, we calculated it to be, you know, at original four forty for the ten ninety-two, or in this case. Uh, plus the freight would be the fifteen ninety two, but we return stuff along the way, so now we don't have it anymore. We only have fifteen sixty nine ninety six. So now we need to calculate our new average cost per item. So I'm going to go ahead and take my net purchases, right? Because we want to make sure that we got we grabbed everything, and we're going to solve for our new average cost per item, which is going to be my total cost divided by my total quantity. So in this case, what is my new average cost per item? Point 
Okay. Yes. Okay. So it's a bit. Of, it's it's about a bunch of mumble jumbo, but at least we have this number because now we. This is the average cost per item. So if I were to sell one item, it's gonna cost me three dollars sixty four cents, and you know, in a quarter of a penny. Okay. So because we have this number, we have to do an equal round formula. But the great thing about this is we only need to solve for my uh, the items that I sold or I could solve for my ending balance. But in this case, because I taught you this way, I'm going to go ahead and show it to you here so you guys can reference it. So in order to solve for selling 325 items, I'm going to go ahead and equal round this, right? So I take 325 I multiply by my three dollars and six sixty four two five nine nine, and I'm gonna solve for how much my total cost for selling the three hundred and twenty five items. So here we go, equal round. Right, I'm gonna put my equation. I want it to be the three twenty five, multiply by my average cost per item. Right comma two because i want two decimal places okay and what should be my total cost for selling 325 items eighty five how did you get eighty five Four eight four four five. So four four does yeah. It rounds it doesn't round at all. Or it, it stays the way it is. Okay. So there it is. And because I have that number, I can solve for my ending balance by simply taking what I have. If I have what I began with and I subtract out what I sold, then that should be get you should be able to get your ending balance of $386.12. So there we have it. We have everything that we need. We know that we are um, transferring 106 items. Okay. So All right, any questions on how to do periodic inventory? No. Okay, so let's go ahead and do our conversion entry because that's the first thing we got to do since we solved for my uh, inventory, right? My, I solved for my ending balance. I solved for my cost of goods sold. So now let's go ahead and do my first adjustment entry. So it should be June 30th right now. Okay. If you guys remember, how do I do my conversion entry? Anybody? Do you guys remember how to convert from inventory and cost of goods sold? Inventory and cost of goods sold. But in this case, what was what's our specific inventory item? Uh, coffee mugs. It should yes, perfect. It should be ceramic. Ceramic coffee. Mugs. Can someone tell me what the account number is for that one? 12050. Yes, 12050. Okay. We have a cost of goods sold. 
Okay, so can you guys uh, look up on your chart of accounts? What specifically is this cost of goods sold? It should be cost of goods sold. I think I did write ceramic coffee mugs. Five oh one fifty. Five oh one fifty. Okay, good. All right. What else do we need to include? Ceramic coffee mug is one twenty fifty. One twenty. Oh, sorry, I fat fingered that. One twenty fifty. There you go. Okay, so what else do I have to include? I'm converting from what to what? Come on, guys, this is chapter five. Repurchase expense to inventory. Yes, we're going to be, that's the whole point of a conversion entry. We are converting from our purchase expense. So in this case, I got my purchase expense. What else? And the freight expense, good. I think freight expense was 6,300 while uh, purchase expense should be 61,000. Okay. Or it could be, I think it's 62, 61, 62. 61. 61, okay. All right. What else did I have in there? Did I only make purchases or did it also do something else? Returns. Yes. We also need to remember that we returned some of these things. We didn't we didn't purchase all 440. We also returned 10. Purchase returns and allowances. Okay, and what account number is that? Should be like 60. Okay, good. So that's just our temporary little thing right there. Okay, so first things first is do we have, I'm sorry, what was my ending inventory balance? What was the cost, what was the cost of having 106 items? 386.12. Okay, how much was my cost of goods sold? 3.5. Okay, the total cost of what I have left or sold 439 that's goods available yeah 325 so what was what was the cost of it there you go okay 118384 good what was my total returns Yes, twenty-two twenty-four. Okay, what was my total purchases? Okay, I, I scrolled too down. 
What was my total purchases? Okay, uh, the cost. That is including the freight. 1092.20, good. No, that's not including the freight. 1069.96 is, I think, including the returns. 10. Okay. We're only, okay, so we've already included our returns and allowances for the 22.24. should be the 106996 is that not right that's correct if you're looking at this standpoint but here i'm only focusing on what i actually originally purchased because i already included my contra account right here for the 2224 already so um, for in this case you're just focusing on what you originally purchased it for right but it, yeah for for what you originally that's purchased it for that's a, that was my point this is, it's not included no, 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 no freight, not, not yet. Okay, but out of those two numbers, right, we're just looking at what was our original purchase price before our returns and allowances because here we've already, in my journal, I've already included my purchase uh, returns and allowances. I've already deducted it away from my total amount that I'm supposed to have. So right here, this question is just asking me, or what I'm asking you guys is, what was my original total purchases? And then what is my total freight? Okay. So good. So 10, 92, 20, and 500. Okay. So here, let's go ahead and equal sum these just to make sure that we uh, match on both ends. So I have 1592.20 and 1592.20 on both sides. Okay, so good. We did this correctly. Okay. And then now I'm just going to put a little message here. Adjusting. Or adjustment entry for periodic inventory okay so then this will make more sense Dan when we actually go to our general ledger because when we are trying to zero out the accounts you shouldn't have anything remaining in the purchase returns or the purchase expense at all so we're trying to, essentially, we're trying to zero out all of those accounts and place them into other accounts. So in this case, right, I'm going to take my total amount that I purchased and I'm going to evenly distribute, or not evenly, but I'm going to distribute them between what I have available, what I sold, and what I returned. So in this case, I need to have my total full amount of my purchases and my freight so I can distribute them accordingly. Okay. So now that we finish our journal, let's go ahead and post to our ledger. Okay, let me shrink that up. Okay. So here is our ledger. We're going to be looking for inventory items. So let's go let's go ahead and place that into our assets first. Okay, so here we are, ceramic coffee mugs, right? It is 6.30, and I'm going to write right here, adjustment. Okay. 
Okay, you could do a, 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 a DJ for short, and I'm gonna say 106 mugs. Okay, and we know it's for the 386.12 on the debit side. Okay. Second thing we have here is we need to place what we actually sold. So I'm going to go locate my uh, cost of goods sold. Scroll down. Here we have the uh, ceramic coffee mugs, cost of goods sold ceramic coffee mugs. And I'm going to put the date adjustment. And I'm going to say sold 325 mugs. And that was for the grand total of 1183.84 on the debit side. Okay. Then we have to zero out our purchase purchase returns. Okay, so I'm going to go to operating, locate my purchases. Is a bad debt, so it should be right above here. Okay, so we didn't have any purchase discounts, but here's my purchase returns and allowances. So because I have currently a credit balance, I need to zero it out, right? Because I acknowledge that I already did my return, right? That's included into my purchases, right? Since that's a contra account it decreased my amount that I had so now I need to zero it out by writing in my entry here and I'm gonna write an adjustment entry okay I think oh I've been skipping general journals the whole time well my bad so general journal number 22 I need to debit my account for twenty two twenty four, which should bring my account balance to be now zero. Okay. Same thing here. We need to also um, reduce my purchase expense. So here's my purchase expense. Okay, so in my purchase expense, I have a total of ten ninety two twenty. That's exactly how much I need to get rid of because I'm converting from periodic inventory. I'm taking that bucket and I'm going to dump it out and put it into either what inventory or my cost of goods sold. All right, so... Um, twenty two. So here I'm going to credit my account for the 1092.20 to bring my account balance to be now zero. Okay. Right. I need to get rid of everything that's in my purchase expense. All right. And then now I need to clear out everything. So if I were to do that one, including the $22.24, then my, my journal, first off, wouldn't balance. And second of all, um, I would have to, I would have a remaining balance of $22.24 in my purchase expense folder or, you know, account which I, I, I can't, I shouldn't, I need to get rid of everything that's in my uh, purchase expense account because uh, I'm converting it. I'm, I created a bucket, I put everything in there, now I need to get rid of everything that's in that bucket. So I can't have anything remaining in that account for any reason. And I already associated my returns and allowances, which was my 
uh, Contra account. I already got rid of that already. Okay, so that's just a little FYI. Last but not least, we need to get rid of our freight expense, which is right here. Freight expense, so 630, all right, adjustment. General journal number 22, and it is a credit for 500, which should bring my account balance to be zero, okay? Good, everyone good with me so far? Yes. Okay. All right. Okay, so let's go ahead and see what adjustment is next. So here, I need to look at the cost of materials. Okay, so when I sold the coffee, right, I had to use the cups. But in my books, it still says that I have 7,000 cups. I need to make this adjustment saying that I used or I got rid of all of these cups. So in this case, uh, for my medium coffee cups, I sold a total of 5,297 cups. And eat, right here I have the cost per item, right? It includes the tax. So um, it's going to cost me about 5 and 42 cents for each cup. And in this case, I already calculated it for you because it's not your job to calculate it. So I've already done it for you. Here it is. So if I sold 5,297 5, cups, it cost me a grand total of $286.70. Okay. Same thing with the... Uh, large coffee cups, the sugar, and the creamer. So let's go ahead and look at these accounts. So if I go to my general ledger, okay, how do I reflect that I sold my coffee cups? How do I reflect that? How do I reflect that I sold or got rid of my coffee book, coffee cups? The cost of goods sold. It's okay. What's 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 also underneath cost of goods sold? Look at your chart of accounts if you need a hint. Cost of materials. Cost of materials, yes. Right? We have here the medium coffee, the large coffee, the sugar, and the creamer. So this is, yes, another expense account, right? Cost of goods sold is essentially an expense, right? It's to get rid of your inventory. This is also the same thing, except this one is actually adjusting your um, business supplies by costing at the cost of material. Now, you could also make a different adjustment entry by saying, okay, well, I got rid of this many cups. Or I could have just easily written it off instead of doing a cost of material. But in this case, I'm also applying it to my actual cups of coffee, right? My purchase, or sorry... My selling price includes this. And now I'm making an adjustment because I want to make sure that every cup that I sold is going to cost me a specific, um, you know, amount. So in this case, I've already calculated for you. So how am I going to journalize this? How am I going to make an adjustment? So it's very similar to cost of goods sold, okay? So 
So if I sold or got rid of stuff, how do I make this adjustment? Now, are we increasing our assets or decreasing our assets? Decrease. Decreasing. So flip that around. Oh, COM? COM first because how are expenses normally journalized? How do we reflect that we sold the materials? It's an expense. So you would normally debit your expenses. Yes. So cost of materials, right? And each one has a specific one. So for this case, go ahead and combine them all together. So cost of, so like uh, the journal entry is going to be um, all together is what I meant. Don't do individuals because that's kind of a waste of space too. You can do it. It's not wrong. But to save some space, since we already have all the information that we need, then we could just go ahead and do it that way. So first things first is we got to recognize the cost of materials for the medium cups. So COM for cost of material. And this is for the medium coffee cups. Okay. What else do we have to adjust? The large coffee cups as well. Yes. So here, like I said, this is what I meant by combining them. We're going to just combine coffee cups. Okay. We're just going to combine all of them into a single journal entry versus doing them individually, right? What else do we need to uh, uh, adjust? Sugar. Sugar and creamer, mm -hmm. yes. So COM, sugar, and then COM, creamer, okay? So here, what are my account numbers? Medium coffee cups is 51,200. 51,200. Large cups. 51,250. Sugar. 300 and 350. Yeah, there you go. Okay. So there's that. Okay. <clears throat> All right. And then where am I taking them out from? Okay, so um, these these items are not inventory. Okay, if you remember what you said earlier, you're gonna take them at, right out of our business supplies. Right. Okay, we got our medium coffee cups. We got our large coffee cups. Yeah, we have our sugar. And we also have our creamer. Okay. Um, my medium coffee cups should be account number. Eleven seven sixty. Eleven seven seventy. Oh, okay, sixty five and then eleven seven seventy and eleven seven seven five. Okay, good. Thank you. All right. So now let's take a look at our cost of materials. So I said I've already calculated for you how much was the total of the cups that I sold. So 
for the medium cups. How much did it cost me to, to sell or get rid of? Two eighty six seventy. Okay, that means I'm gonna take that exact amount away from my coffee, from my business supplies. Okay. What else? How much was the cost of selling for my large coffee cups? Three fifty one sixty three. How much did it cost me to sell, to use um, 120 pounds of coffee, of sugar? 43.20. Okay, and then lastly, how much was my creamer? 359.26. 359.26. Okay. And then here, you can write a note, adjustment to business supplies. Okay. So now that we completed our journal, we can go ahead and complete our ledger so ledger i'm already here in my cost of goods uh, cost of materials under the cost of goods tab so let's go ahead and start from here so the cost of materials for the medium cups again i'm going to place uh, pertinent information such as how many cups that i used or how many cups that i sold in this case, I sold 5,297. So I'm going to write here, sold 5,297 cups. General journal number 22. And this is a debit for the 28,670. Down below, same thing here. I'm going to say sold four And I'm going to debit my account for Sugar, used 120 pounds, for a total of 43.20. And I also used, how many cases of the creamer did I use? 22. 22 cases. Journal, journal 22, debit for the 359.26. Okay. All right. 
So now that I completed my cost of material, now I actually have to adjust my business supplies. So this is where we're going to actually get to see how many items we have left. Or in this case, what's our value we have left. So here I'm gonna scroll up because my business supplies are right above everything. So here we are, medium coffee cups. So perfect, I have just the one line left. So I'm gonna go ahead and write this. Now I'm gonna put adjustment. Okay, I sold five, nine, five, two, nine, seven cups. Okay, general journal number 22, and that total cost me uh, 286.70. So, therefore, I should have what should be my ending balance? Ninety two eighteen. Good. Now, if you want to, you could calculate how much you should have left remaining. Usually that happens when you transfer all the information into the next month's um, stuff, just so that you know how much you started out with. Uh, because uh, for the next month, usually you put your beginning balances and everything that you have that you know. So you can transfer all the information from this workbook to the next new workbook, Right, and you're going to indicate that you have a beginning balance of so and so cups at 9218. All right, but in this case, I am done here. I have my adjustment, I put what I sold, and that's how much I should have left. Okay. So, here we are for my large cups. Right, same thing here 630. I'm going to write adjustment and that I sold 4,331 4, cups. Okay. General journal number 22 and it is a credit for the 351.63. So what should be my new ending balance in my large coffee cups? Two one six six nine. Okay. Moving on to the sugar. Okay. So here, six thirty. I'm gonna write adjustment, and I'm gonna write I used one twenty pounds. General journal. General Journal 22, and that using 120 pounds cost me 43.20. Okay, so therefore, how much is my new ending balance in my sugar account? 21.60, right? We have exactly 20 pounds left, or sorry, 60 pounds left. Last but not least, we have an adjustment to this. So I'm going to write adjustment, and we used 22 cases. General Journal 22, and it cost me 359.26. So therefore, what's my adjustment, or what's my ending balance in my creamer account? Yes, one seven nine six three, right? And that's it, right? We transferred everything from the journal to the ledger. Okay, right. This is how we do an adjustment to reflect how many how many cups or our supplies, right? What did we use? So in this case, if we didn't make that, um, you know, adjustment, our account will still reflect that we have 
7,000 medium coffee cups. We have 7,000 large medium, uh, large coffee cups. When, we re when really we don't because we need to make this adjustment to reflect the true value of what we actually have left. Okay? So, yes. Any questions so far? Okay, so then what happened next? statement for our overdraft yes okay you can get your bank statement anywhere whether you re retrieved it online that's usually the best one you could find it immediately um or you can wait till it gets into the mail but then you then then you have to readjust your closing period because this belongs to the month of june not the month of july okay so here it is my bank statement so i've been overdrafted by how much okay yes that's what they charged me right because if you guys remember but i put it placed it down here as well that for any amount that's overdrafted, right, we have our overdraft protection plan. However, the bank says that we have up to $10,000 or I think 9000 I don't remember, dollars that we can go over, right? And in this case, if we go over, we're going to get instantly charged 22% interest, okay? So once again, this... Um, has to do with uh, using the time value of money, right? Especially when we're uh, looking at interest. So here, um, since it's 22%, you divide it by 12, and then you multiply by how much you overdrafted by, and uh, we got a grand total of 118.30, okay? Because we didn't overdraft once, we overdrafted twice. So that's a combination of both uh, amounts. So because of that reason, we got charged 118 and 30 cents. What else did we do? Insufficient funds. Yes, we wrote five of them or four of them, excuse me, since it's $25 per um, NSF check. Right, we wrote one uh, for 1517, 1524, 25, and 26. Okay. Now, because we have our overdraft protection plan, they paid in they paid for for us. So that's why they they charged us a twenty a twenty five dollars per NSF check that we have written. So in this case, I racked up another hundred dollars worth of. NSF checks. And of course, because we are banking with them, they charged us $50 worth of service charges. So again, all of these are going to be what? Where are we going to place all this stuff? Bank fees. Bank fees. Yes, it's already an expense that already occurred because if you look at your bank statement, right, and you compare it to your actual bank account, if you do online banking, they charge you automatically, right? So this is us going back in our books and figuring it out, figuring out what they charged us. Okay, so if it, if it, since it's coming directly from our bank account, therefore, on the thirtieth they charged us a total of and that should have charged automatically from your checking account you don't write a check to them it should have already been taken out directly 
from your bank account. So in this case, what is my account number for my bank fees? Be sixty one hundred. Okay. So again, I'm gonna do I'm gonna do my quick math here. Fifty plus one eighteen. Thirty plus one hundred gives me a grand total of two hundred sixty eight dollars and thirty cents. Okay, and that should have been already taken out of my bank account automatically. So what I'm gonna place here is. Adjusting, or I guess adjustment, bank reconciliation. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to go ahead and go to my ledger. Right, so I can adjust my bank account and also acknowledge those bank charges. So here, bank fees, I'm going to write the date in there. You can write bank reconciliation. Or you can write... So their bank rec and then I got service charge of 50 over draft 22% which charged me one eighteen thirty and NSF checks one hundred. Right? And this was for a grand total of the two sixty eight thirty. Okay. Once I fill that part in, last thing I gotta do is I actually have to adjust my bank account because it automatically charged my account. So I need to make sure that I update my bank account accordingly. Here's my checking account. 630. I'm just gonna write bank fees. That's pretty straightforward. General journal number 22. And it's for the 268.30. So what is my total ending balance in my checking account? The thirteen four two five thirty seven. Okay. So everyone go through so far. Yes. Okay. Let's see what my next adjustment is going to be. So here we need to replenish the petty cash fund. Right, if you guys remember, right, we had the owner, Mr. Bob Mason, go buy pizza for the grand opening party, right? So we took out, he took out a $200 to pay a total of $187.16. Okay? We asked Irene to go buy a grand opening party cake, right, for $23.80. And then we had Mr. Albert go buy the party supplies, utensils, streamers, whatever, plates. Okay. And he racked up a total of $71.82. So how do I replenish my petty cash fund? How 
do I replenish my petty cash run? Good. Yes. All of these, I'm going to associate them as business expenses. Yes. All right. You got to first recognize what each, uh, what each transaction is. In this case, all three of them, I'm going to associate them as all business expenses. Right. They are things that are relating to the company. Right, party supplies. I don't have a party party supplies expense account, but it's all business related, right? I didn't throw a party randomly. I threw it for the company, right? Business expense. Okay. What else do I need to do? Check. Check. Yes, you need to write a check to the petty cash fund. So in this case. Checking, all right? So let's first go ahead and go to our check register. All right? It is now 6.30. We're going to write check number 1533 for the grand total amount of... What's my check amount for? Two eighty two seventy eight. Did you get that? Is that what you said? Two oh eight two seventy eight. All right. Once again, you actually gonna be writing somebody's name, but in this case, I didn't really assign who's going to be in charge of the petty cash fund. So I'm just going to say I'm going to write it to the petty cash fund. So check number 1533. Okay. All right. So my note here is going to be replenish petty Cash check number fifteen thirty three. Okay. Checking is ten one hundred and it was for two eighty two seventy eight. Two eight two seven eight. Okay. Two eight two seven eight. So let's go ahead and adjust our ledger real quick and we'll stop here. Okay. So I have another bank or business expense. So it should be right below. Business expense. Okay. Uh, 630. Okay. Party or grand. Opening. Party supplies. For the 282.78. So therefore, what is my grand total or my ending balance in my business expense account? Yes, 1282.78. And then last but not least, we also need to update our bank account. So 630, you could say replenish petty cash check number 
four and a six for the two eighty two seventy eight. So what's my ending balance in my bank account? Yes. Okay. All right. So we're going to stop here. Um, we're going to stop here. And we're going to call break now. So right now it is exactly 10 o'clock. So...